Hello and welcome to this VMware Bootcamp. My name is Carl Conley with EMC and I'm going to introduce to you today vSpecs and the best practices for VMware View Mobile Secure Desktop with EMC, VNX and Avamar. So let me start by introducing what vSpecs is. vSpecs is a new solution, a channel only solution that EMC has brought to market. It combines the best in class in hypervisors, servers, network, storage, and backup. So vSpecs is a solution that allows customers to avoid the risks and complexity of building their own cloud infrastructures by providing sizing guides, deployment guides, and reference architectures to provide a simple, efficient, and flexible virtualization solution that scales to meet your needs. VSpecs are designed to provide the utmost of flexibility and because the solutions are proven by EMC you can deploy this solution with confidence and in a repeatable way. You can also leverage your existing hardware, software, licenses and skill sets to build a VSpecs that is tailored to your specific needs and your specific environment. This graphic represents the VSpecs stack as you can see it's the combination of an application, a hypervisor, servers, network, storage and backup. Let's take a look at some of the uh, reference architectures that we have for VIEW. So as you can see there are four basic configurations. Depending on the size of your environment you can have an environment that will scale to 250 virtual desktops, 500, 1000 or 2000. And as you can see, the reference architecture details the server sizing that you would need, as well as the networking, to support a VMware view environment of that particular size. Now, as you'll notice, um, there are different storage arrays for each of the solution, depending on the size again. So if you have a small environment with up to 250 virtual desktops, we're recommending EMC VNX E and it would be the 3300 model. In conjunction as a backup solution we are positioning EMC Avamar, the EMC Avamar Virtual Edition. Now as you're scaling upwards say to 500 virtual desktops you can see that the storage unit is the VNX which is the 5300 and the backup solution again is Avamar but in this instance you would require physical Avamar nodes same is true for the thousand virtual desktops it's the same array the VNX 5300 and then the backup solution also is Avamar. If you require up to 2000 virtual desktops in your environment then we're recommending the VNX the 5500 and as backup again EMC Avamar. Okay so now that we've introduced vSpecs as a concept for you and I've outlined the four reference architectures for view Let's take a look at how to employ some of the best practices on the VNX platform for Vue. So as stated, I am logged into Unisphere here. And Unisphere is the management interface for VNX. On this first screen, you'll see we've come to the dashboard, which is a customizable view into all of the discovered systems in the, in the environment, alerts, and capacity. In this environment, I only have one system discovered, as you can see up here. Uh, this one happens to be the VNX 5500. So if you, if you recall from the previous screen on the PowerPoint, this uh, system will support up to 2,000 virtual desktops with VMware View. EMC's first recommendation for optimization of the VNX for VMware View is under the system cache settings. So from the system management section on the, on the right hand side here, I can select the manage cache link and that will pop up this interface for me here. And as you can see, um, I have the options here to enable cache and I also have the options to set low and high watermarks. So by default, when you log in, these will not be set optimally for view. So we'll want to change these to 70 for the low and 90 for the high. Caching temporarily stores frequently accessed data in the storage processors D or AM 
memory or the SP cache or in fast cache. So by setting these settings all LUNs with read caching enabled will share the read cache of the service processor that owns them and all LUNs with write cache enabled share the write cache of the service processor that owns them. So by setting the low at 70 and the high at 90 we're ensuring optimal use of cache. By keeping the data in cache longer um, it facilitates faster read and write access rather than having to flush this data onto um, slower disks. So if I wanted to apply this I would simply click OK. OK so the next recommendation that we have with respect to optimizing the VNX for view environments relates specifically to the data mover in the VNX and to access the settings for data mover parameters we're going to go up here to settings choose data mover parameters and what I'm looking to edit now would be the settings for the end threads. Now end threads have already been configured on this system and you can see them listed out here. If I did have end threads in my list here but it wasn't set optimally I can simply select it so it's highlighted choose properties and then in the resulting pop-up window here specify the value that we want now in our case this environment is set up to support 2000 desktops and n -treads, the n -tread value basically allows you to set one thread per NFS request so assigning one NFS request thread to a given desktop is our best practice so in our case as I have 2000 virtual desktops in this environment setting the value at 2048 is, is optimal and it's in increments of 512 so that makes perfect sense 4 times 512 is 2048 that will make sure that I encompass the 2000 virtual desktops NFS requests um, to the data mover comfortably so if this was something else I would just specify the value for 2048 hit apply and OK as it's already set I don't have to change it here. Having set and verified the cache setting on the service processors and changing the end thread on the data mover the optimization settings on the system is complete. Now if end threads have not been set on your system at all and you're not getting them in this view because obviously this view shows only the set parameters you would just need to specify all parameters here from the drop down and then locate end threads in your list. As you can see, there's quite a lot of customization you can do for any given data mover, but for VM or view environments, realistically speaking, the only one that we're really concerned is with is this end threads. So as it's already set, I don't have to do anything more. So having set and verified the cache settings on the service processors, and having changed the end thread value are verifying that it was set to 2048 on the data mover the optimized settings for this system are complete now let's take a look at the storage configured on the system and understand the best practices that have been employed um, for VMware view so let's revisit the system settings by re-clicking on the manage cache link and we'll click on the fast cache ta tab let's expand this a, a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about now, as you can see here EMC recommends for a configuration of up to 2000 view virtual desktops that four enterprise flash drives be used and configured as RAID 1 providing 183 gigabytes of read write capable cache by enabling fast cache on the system you can greatly increase the system's performance and make this resource available to all of the storage pools that you define with other drive types. Fast cache will be applied array wide for both block and file access. And the way fast cache works is by examining 64K chunks of data in fast cache enabled objects on the array, allowing frequently accessed data to be read from and written to cache for dramatically faster responses and a great reduction in data hotspots on the system's LUNs. Now EMC recommends fast cache for VMware View because this extension of cache consistent performance 
will absorb the heavy activities such as boot storms and virus scans and write heavy applications such as patching and update. This will ensure that your end user's experience is optimal on this array. In other words, they won't get lagging connections or slowed performance and they'll have a seamless experience with their view desktop. FastCache will greatly help roaming profiles as data can be stored locally on network share hosted by the VNX. Now in this UI you can see the four enterprise flash drives that have been combined basically to provide this fast cache. You can see that the state is enabled and you can see the combined size in RAID 1 is 183 gigabytes. And if there were more disks, you could have the op option to create, or you can similarly have the option to destroy. As this is set up and is optimally configured, I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel here. We'll see how to apply fast cache to other stor storage pools shortly. Okay, so now we've talked about the uh, cache settings, we've looked at the fast cache, and we've also looked at the data mover. Let's dive into some of the storage pool configurations. So from the navigation, we're going to go ahead and click storage. And from here, we're going to pick uh, storage configuration. And now we're going to take a look at the uh, storage pools. So let's go ahead and click that. Let me just resize this window a bit you can see that there are multiple pools set up. Now this system, as I said, supports up to 2,000 virtual desktops in the vSpecs reference architectures for VMware View. You can see here there are three pools that have been defined, a desktop, an infrastructure, and pool one. Let's first take a look at desktop. As you can see from the details here, it is made up of SAS drives. It is also a RAID 5 configuration. RAID 5 which is uh, 4 plus 1 in this case and the drives are 300 gigs or thereabouts in size. Now let us uh, examine this RAID 5 pool for a moment. RAID 5 of course is ideal for link clones as it provides the correct balance of protection and performance and this pool has been configured to have one LUN per physical disk and EMC recommends when you're adding LUNs to a pool, a RAID 5 pool like this, you do it in multiples of 5. Again, this pool is used for link clones and view desktops. And you can see that the LUNs here are defined. And these are the actual physical disks then in this pool. As I now let's click on the properties of this particular pool. Now, as I said, uh, EMC recommends the use of fast cache on the VNX for VMware View. Fast cache, as previously mentioned, leverages a small number, and it was four in our case, enterprise flash drives. The drives keep the data uh, that is accessed frequently available in cache rather than having to commit the I.O. to drives. And let's verify that the um, fast cache is actually enabled on this pool, and we click on advanced here. And as you can see, the checkbox is enabled for fast cache. From this fast cache optimized pool, we will present the LUNs to the file head and the storage pool for file, which we'll look at now in a moment, is automatically created through the use of EMC's automatic volume manager. The EMC automatic volume manager, or AVM, has been greatly enhanced to incorporate these best practices for layout because AVM will intelligently stripe the files across all dvolts. And once the optimized pool for file is created, the file systems thereafter can be created from this optimized pool. Okay, so let's revisit um, the pools. We're going to look at storage pools. So let's select storage, storage configuration, and this time round, we're going to look at storage pool for files to see what's being defined. Okay, so now we're looking at storage pools for file. And as you can see, these three pools that basically relate back to the previous storage pools that we had defined. 
Selecting any pool will give you the overview of the properties, but um, let's drill down to examine this further. Okay, so once the properties windows populates, let's go ahead and take a, a look at this. So some of the best practices are that automatic extension is enabled. Some of the best practices created by the AVM are that the automatic extension is enabled, obtain unused disk volumes is enabled, and slice pool volumes by default is enabled. And you can see here that the stripe size is 256. So AVM really does a lot of the work for you by laying out the volumes in an optimized way. So let's take a look now at some of the file systems. So we can go back to storage configuration and select file systems. And here you can see a list of the file systems that are defined for this v VNX. In our reference architecture document for VMware View for 2000 virtual desktops on the VNX, we recommend 16 total file systems, NFS file systems, each of which will provide storage for link clone desktops and master images. A link clone, of course, is a virtual desktop created from VMware View Composer from a writable snapshot that is paired with a read-only replica of a master image. And from the 16 total file systems, 14 file systems have been defined for link clones. And these file systems that get used for link clones get automatically striped across five individual vol volumes and the AVM handles that for you so you don't have to worry about it. The best practices are built into the AVM. Okay, from here I'd like to revisit the uh, storage actually and let's take a look at the storage configurations and storage pools. Now we were here before as you recall those desktop infrastructure in pool 1. I want to talk about this pool. As you can see here pool 1 is considerably larger than the other storage pools it's also made up of disks in RAID 6 and you can see the type is nearline SAS. Now EMC recommends the use of VMware View Persona. The advantage of persona management is first it loads profile data only when needed as opposed to roaming profiles load all data at login. This means that you get faster logins and secondly it can synchronize the changes to that data at set intervals rather than log off. Roaming profiles only sync at log off. This means faster log on and log off times and less storage impact from log off storms. If I take a look at the properties of this pool, verify first that we have fast cache enabled, which we do, and take a look at the disks then that make up this pool. Again, this pool is created using 32 nearline SASs that are configured in a RAID 6, 6 plus 2. 32 disks are used because the block based storage pool requires a drive count that is in multiples of 8. 6 plus 2 obviously is 8, and 4 times 8 is 32. And as I said and showed, fast cache is recommended and enabled on this pool. And during the creation of this pool using the automatic volume manager, you can see that the AVM knows that it's best practice to alternate every second LUN to a different service processor. The VNX obviously has two service processors A and B and each LUN is alternated uh, to the appropriate service processor for load balancing. Okay so that basically covers the few tweaks and optimization settings for a VNX for a VMware View. I would highly recommend that you take a look at our reference architectures which are available on our website at www.emc.com slash vspecs and from there you can select resources look at our reference architectures and select the reference architecture for view in this case it would be VMware view for up to 2000 virtual desktops thank you very much Okay, so now we're going to take a look at um, backing up your view, view clients with Avamar. So I have here on the desktop launched uh, the Avamar console. 
And this video assumes that you are familiar with Avamar and you know how to create Avamar domains, groups, schedules, and the like. I'm also going to assume for the purpose of this demo that you're familiar with importing your virtual center configuration into Avamar. And um, you're aware that Avamar has a tight integration with VMware using the VMware a API for data protection. So with the administrator launched, let's take a look at the policy icon, which will display the Avamar system and the configured groups. Ideally, for management ease of use, we'd recommend you set up domains and groups that are named for the function they serve. That just makes it easy for you. Um, so at a glance, you can tell what the role and responsibilities of a particular group are. So in this uh, system, I've configured an Avamar domain that's named DTLT, which is a short abbreviation for desktop laptop. So at a glance, I know that this is where my VMware View Mobile Secure Clients reside. Now, with inside this domain, I have two groups defined. One is named View underscore User Data, and the second group is defined for the user profiles. Each group, of course, allows you to control the data set which contains the plugins and the destination, the destination being Avamar, our data domain for a certain set of plugins, the schedule, the retention, and the clients that are going to be backed up as part of that group. So you can see by compartmentalizing user data and user profiles into their own groups, you have a great uh, granularity in terms of how those backups um, should be managed and then how you can mon monitor them. So here you see the two groups that I'm going to back up. For this demo, I'm just doing an on-demand backup. So even though these are part of a group and have a schedule bound to them, I'm just going to do the on-demand backup. So I can choose the groups individually and um, back them up now by clicking on this button. I'm going to repeat this to back up the second group. Now. Let's jump over onto the um, view clients themselves. As you can see, I have two view clients in this environment. And the little status bar icon indicates that Avamar is installed and they're being backed up at this time. In addition, from an administrator perspective, I can always go back to the administrator console and look in the activity monitor, which will detail all of the jobs that have run, any jobs that are active and running, or any jobs that have indeed failed. Just to verify that the last two jobs have been kicked off, we check to see, and you can see here that the status says complete. Let's take a look at one of the view clients. And in this demo, we're going to show the centralized management benefits of VMware View uh, with Avamar. So from an administrator perspective, I know I can set up an, a, a policy with schedules, and all the clients that I need to and back them up and recover them centrally from the admin UI. In the second portion of this demo we're going to show the power of Avamar's desktop laptop interface to empower the end user to manage their own recoveries. So on this first client vSpecs251 we have several documents that I have created in the documents folder. What we're going to do is simulate the loss of these documents by simply highlighting them and delete them. And once they're deleted, we can see that they're permanently gone. Now we're going to initiate a restore of our group. So we're going to look at our desktop laptop group. And you can see um, that this client is the one that we just deleted the, the files from. So in Avamar, we can manage recoveries from the admin UI, as I said. We simply have to choose that um, backup restore UI. And then you'll notice this calendar interface that makes it very easy to see when there were viable backups for this particular client. Any dates that have a circle on them means that there is a backup for that client. And once you select the, the date on the right-hand side, then you'll get a list of backups for that particular client. Now, if I select a given backup, one that obviously predated the deletion of the files, on the left, I can see in this UI that looks very similar to Windows Explorer, I can traverse the file systems 
um, the folders and drill down into the location where the files were. I can select the files and I can initiate a um, restore. And let's take a look at that and let it happen. So the next UI shows the options available to the administrator. As you can see here, I can restore everything to its original location, to a different location, or indeed to multiple locations. And um, once I initiate the restore, I can basically quickly and efficiently restore any user's files with ease. Now, once the restore is complete, I'm going to log back into the view client and browse to the location of the files um, to where they have been restored. And as you can see, the files have all been restored, those four Office files that I deleted earlier. In this next example, we're, we're going to show the power of Avamar's desktop, laptop, and user interface. So for the sake of the demo, let's assume that I'm a remote user that has a machine named vspecs 250-2. To simulate, again, a, a typical use case, we're going to delete the files from this user's machine, much like I did in the previous case. So again, if the user is on the road um, and they delete the files by accident or somehow the files got corrupted, instead of calling the help desk looking for help, probably being put in a queue and having gotten a ticket, Avamar makes it very easy for the user to uh, be empowered by recovering their own files. So again, let's uh, log into the documents folder. Let's delete these files. I have deleted them now and uh, they're fully gone from the machine. They're not even available in the recycle bin. And um, we're going to take a look at the user initiator restore. So when the Avamar client is installed and is active, you'll see that it has a little icon that's um, visible on the taskbar. And from here, you can right-click and launch the option for the restore. So selecting the restore will launch the client interface that will automatically authenticate the user based on their login into their machine. Now, they're going to get a, a browser-based interface. And from the website that's um, basically dis display, they can acknowledge the cert and log in to a clean and uncluttered interface, which will allow them based on the policy that's uh, enforced centrally from the backup admin to view their own backup files. Again, the access to their backups is centrally managed and safe from the administrator perspective, but the end user is empowered to restore the files that they have access to in their backups. So on the left-hand side, again, you can see that there are files and folders are displayed, again, in a very similar Windows Explorer type interface and uh, I can drill down to a file or folder um, that I want to restore. Now I just need to select a time and date from the available backups and select the files I want. Again, I as the end user now have the option to rename the files or to save them to um, their original location. And Avamar Desktop Laptop also has the advantage of versioning so I can roll back to a point in time of a given file. As long as there's been multiple backups of that file, I'll have multiple versions from which to restore. So I just have to select and choose Restore, and it'll initiate the restore. And as you can see, I get this little balloon on the screen that gives me the status of the job when it's complete. And then I can log in uh, to that, that folder directory, my documents, and see that the documents are restored. Now, important to notice if we go back to the administrator, from the administrator perspective, um, any and all actions logged by the client are available to me in the activity monitor. So I can view any of the actions that are happening um, or any requests that are being made to the Avamar server at any time. And of course, with Avamar, data is encrypted in flight and at rest. So that concludes the demo for the vSpecs Avamar portion of this uh, session. Thank you.